Besides, we're not hurting anybody. What are you talking about? You ripped a whole chunk of wall out of the house. What is this? There's something wrong with the house. I don't like change. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it's been an interesting time in, in the comic book industry, obviously with what just happened between DC and Diamond. I thought that we could all agree that Diamond, uh, as a monopoly, was bad for the industry, and, and probably competition would be good, but it turns out that is not the case. Uh, a lot of retailers were not happy about that. I do want to find out if the, we do have some common ground, and with me to talk about this are two of my retail uh, uh, friends, Yule Carter from Fantastic Comics. How you doing? Very good. Looking forward. And we to also it. have Perch from Comics by Perch. How you doing? I'm doing great. All right, fellas. So I thought we had common ground with Diamond. I thought everyone would be like, you know, maybe they didn't agree with what was happening, but they did agree that competition would be best for the industry. That turned out not to be the case. Uh, you know, it, it caused quite the uproar. So let's find out: is there common ground among retailers, comic book uh, readers? The one thing that I thought that we could probably all agree on is returnability. No returnability for the direct market is bullshit. It's got to be, as a comic book retailer, when you look and you see that they do have returnability for their comics that are in Walmart, when they do have returnability, when they work with shops that are outside of the direct market and they give that to them, obviously the ordering prices in, in wholesale are a little bit different. Because the terms are different, but the fact that they offer that out there has to be frustrating from a comic book uh, retailer perspective. I know it's one of your big issues, too. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I if, it, it, what happens is you know it's always nice when something gets really popular and you have it in stock, but that doesn't happen all the time or most of the time. And now that I'm moving stores and I'm looking at all the stuff that I've acquired, and I feel like we order pretty tight. I mean, sometimes we get, you know, our eyes get a little bit bigger than our stomachs or we really want to try and push something. But when you look back at eight years worth of material, it just looks like waste after a while. Not having any of that really be returnable. I mean, it's mostly Marvel also. Um, Image has a program from time to time where they allow returnability. DC does when they're trying to kick something off and make it a big deal. They usually do like the first three issues. So, you know, anything I have after that is kind of my own fault. But Marvel, whew, they're always stopping and restarting and stopping. And here's a miniseries and all this other stuff. It really piles up. And for that to not be returnable, and then you see Barnes & Noble, I understand they're a big company. They have a lot more eyes fixating on your stuff if they're in there. But to give them probably a better discount than I'm getting or a better deal. I mean, nobody puts, when they would do Marvel Masterworks, they had Barnes and Noble editions. <laughs> I don't get the Fantastic yeah. Comics edition of that. And then they're returnable. <laughs> that exclusive one's returnable, really? <laughs> so that's yeah. it's kind of like some of the problem I have with not, you know, not wanting it or wanting returnability, I mean. You know, I, I how who would disagree with returnability in the in the retail world? I, I mean, it's it's uh, with the planning that goes on, with the marketing, with the shifting of creative teams, with the, the delays, with everything else that was going on. And I recently was going back and kind of reminiscing about Capital City and kind of and was noticing that they were pushing for more returnability back in in '94. It's weird to think about um, that 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 we're we're here in 2020 and and returnability is still his argument. Um, obviously the big box chains move a lot more volume so that's why they can get that kind of deal and those those breaks and those discounts but but still um, returnability is not the most uh, impossible thing in the world. I know, you know, a lot of retailers would take a smaller cut if they had that insurance of a returnability, they would make that trade if it was an option. Um, so I'm, I'm with you. I like who would disagree possibly with returnability. Uh, that said, I woke up to some posts on Facebook for of retailers saying that, uh, you know, returnability is a trap and we can't have returnability. And the people asking for returnability are stupid because that would uh, be one more step to the direct market being destroyed because then, you know, they, they, they it would just enable the newsstand. I don't know what newsstand they're talking about there, but OK, it's. It's weird. I've, I've come to the conclusion at this point, there are people who, if you change anything, like even if, if your arm has been cut off and you're bleeding out inside your shop, it's like, I, I refuse to go to the hospital. It's I'm going to stick it out right here. This is what I know. Uh, it's very strange. 
So you would you would think that would be uh, universally agreed upon. You know, even as a, a reader, I think returnability is good because then you get to take opportunities with comic books that you're not sure how they're going to perform. New properties, maybe new writers on uh, existing properties, things like that, and see if the the audience is going to be there because. You don't know how good the comic book's going to be on day one. You know, a lot of things need word of mouth to, to get some buzz going. You know, it's interesting that somebody found some fault in that, but I'm not surprised. Perch, you know, is there is there something else about the comic book industry? It doesn't have to just be retailers, but that you think that we can, generally speaking, can we all agree on? I think that we can all agree that there needs to be some plan for digital I think even the, the, now what that plan is will vary wildly depending on who you talk to. But I think everybody wants to see a plan. They want to see a like, where is it going exactly? What what are the comic companies, the publishers going to commit to? I think that the biggest frustration or a big frustration I hear at Comic Pro and other places year after year is, is when is there going to be a plan or a stated objective or a this is what we're going to do that gets shared, the industry can digest. Um, I think that uh, that is one area that, that people can agree on is there is no plan and there needs to be one. Um, again, people won't like the plan when they get it, but uh, at least they believe, you know, not having one is a bad thing. You know, almost every one of my customers is not a digital person. So there is that. Um, some will like tear off the things in Marvel and, you know, redeem them and stuff like that. Uh, they got to get a, I'll say this, if you have a plan, it has to be better than that tear off method because yes. <laughs> even my own, I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to do a review on it. It'll be nice to capture a picture and you know, you tear it off and half of it is smudged or something, you know, or tears with it. You look at the future and obviously it's going to be some sort of tablet or maybe one of those Bendis viewing things in front of your face. Um, you know, ooh, look, I'm watching my program now. Uh, something like that. So comic books as like paper. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I don't know where that's going to be in the future. We even see uh, we even see illustrators drawing on tablets and less and less original artwork is actually available. It's sad for me. It's probably not sad for younger people. So, you know, kids that are weaned on an iPad at six months doing things that <laughs> doing like, you know, geometrical problems, you know, with their iPad before I was in high school. <laughs> if they can yeah. write theorems, at, you know, at one, that'll be something. Um, yeah, I, I mean, digital's the way to go, I guess, ultimately. I, I envisioned what a comic book store is just a kiosk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're at a mall if there's even such a thing anymore. Actually, it's probably on YouTube or Twitch or Twitter or whatever. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, this is a, I, I'm a I'm more of an influencer for comic books when it goes digital is what I think is going to happen. Digital should really uh, be accentuating the experience of the direct uh, market and the direct market should be experiencing or accentuating the experience on digital. But the lack of a strategy and really a lack of a direction doesn't give retailers like yourselves the opportunity to to work to find out how they're going to work together and uh, you know promote each other at, at uh, you know at the best possible level. So I think you're you've got that one spot on. Perch. They they need a direction and they need to commit to something so you guys can finally get your digital strategy to go along with theirs. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, the future of retailers, uh, as well said, there is the, this role of an influencer. There is this role of if you do a digital strategy right, the two can complement each other. But if you don't have a strategy, then nobody can plan, nobody can prepare for it, nobody can get their businesses ready. And then it, it forces comic retailers to become kind of, you know, record shops. And that's, uh, you know, most people don't want to be there. They, they actually would like to grow their business and, and continue. And, and so I think... We, we need a strategy. Like I said, the argument will certainly come when strategy and you know, people put forward ideas, but we, we need to start talking about that strategy. And, and I think, um, I don't know, maybe the, the answer there, although I know retail, some retailers disagree with this, uh, we can't keep pretending that it's never going to happen. You know, I, I, I haven't seen it recently. I, I guess I saw a few months ago where retailers were saying, no, 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 uh, paper will never go away. Never 200 years from now, there will still be paper in comic shops. It's like, well, okay, man. But um, generally speaking, I think most people have come to the conclusion the world is going to evolve. And so we should probably figure out what to do. I don't know if I have anything. I, I'm so 
disenfranchised with comic store owners and i don't even know why i did this in the first place i mean what a fool <laughs> i mean i've been a grunt in a comic store a pretty cool comic store and now i'm an owner at a comic store i think a pretty cool comic store i have tastes that don't you know align with my customers all the time and then i have tastes that don't align with you know the rest of the world a lot of the time there's some comic store owners, I feel, that don't really care about comic books. And I would say, oh, well, we can all agree that we like comic books. But even that is a question I have with a lot of people. I, you know, I'm not going to name names, but, you know, there's some people, it's like a, it's like a glitz and glamour lifestyle, if you can believe that. Um, they've, or at least they're evoking that personality out there in the world. I, I hope there's a love of comic. of comic books, man. Yeah, there's people out there. <laughs> all right, <laughs> how about know people. Hey, this is one thing I think that we could all agree on. And there will, there will be a ton of disagreement on how it should be done or if it's even healthy. But comic books need more readers. They need to expand the audience. They certainly need to bring in new young readers. Yes, I agree. <laughs> that, that's true. Maybe the the video. I mean, um, it's what what should everybody agree on? <laughs> um, Ooh, I yeah. think it should be that. I, I do think that there is. Um, I, you know, I, I I definitely have talked to retailers who say that uh, you know this this talk of um, uh, bringing in new readers is bull and and we shouldn't worry about it and that's uh, that's a, a fallacy. I think you know I, I it's 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 interesting. Um, I, I agree with you. I, I think some people have gotten their heads that the comic retailer life can be a rock star life, and it's it's a weird rock star life. It, it's like the starving artist rock star life. It's definitely not the the, the, the rich one. Um, it it is. Uh, it, I mean, it's that stereotype of the comic store owner that that just sits behind the counter and and knows what they like and kind of holds court and uh, tells everybody what to do. And and that's that's. You know, the, that's a way certain people run their business. Um, and in that world, uh, you know, I, it's hard to agree. They, they have their opinions and, and their goal primarily is just to keep life the way it is and not change. And, and that's, that's tough. I mean, I, and in a lot of cases, these businesses will quietly just slowly grind to a halt. It may take a long time, but, but they will. And, um, and we're seeing that. I, I think people should absolutely agree. They want more customers. They want more readers. They want comics in the hands of more people. Um, I think maybe at those top level points, people agree, but how they get there is is always the problem. You know, I I, mean, I would think that that Walmart offering those issues would be great marketing and exposure for comics and remind people. And what's funny is is people are like, well, at least they should put an ad in that thing saying go find comics at your local comic shop. Well, actually, if you open up those those ten dollar books, they have you can get comics at your local comic shop multiple times in, in many cases in those books. They're in those books. And yet, still, that was a bad thing for people. I, I don't know. It's it's a it's a funny world. It is funny, you know. Just that perspective. When you think about, um, let's say, you know, you're in your 30s, you 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 buy a comic shop, and you've been grinding it out for 30 years, and maybe you think you're a rock star, and maybe uh, the influence that you have within the comic book industry or the community, which is a, a small, uh, you know, it's a small community, so you could probably gain that influence pretty pretty well over time, but you know, what's your legacy going to be if there's no new readers? There's no one's going to speak of you or even know who you are, you know, in 15 or 20 years if the industry just falls apart because we never brought in the new readers for comic books or we never showed people that there is an entry point, that this is the best storytelling medium in the world. So if you're, if you're not handing it down to, to somebody else, then what are you really doing? You're just, is it just so you can pay your rent this week? Yeah. I pride myself on the store, my store, because we have quite a few new read, new readers that come in. We've uh, we're the store that you know sells Moon Girl and uh, Lumberjanes and you know stuff from Boom, Oni, obviously the Scholastic books. We do really well on a lot of those, uh, and I'm really happy and looking forward when, especially especially when all right so they're reading their telgemeier books but now they're like you know two years older three years older and now they want to get something that's you know a little bit more substantial that's when you know your runaways come in and things like that and i'm very as far as my store is concerned i'm very hopeful for the future of comic book readers i have 
I have kids that come in after high school, well, you know, at one time <laughs> during lunch or whatnot, uh, to come in and buy comic books. Uh, now they're off school and, you know, they have to wait in line <laughs> for me to hand them their stuff. Uh, but they're still there and that's really awesome. And, you know, I don't know if they're reading digitally. I don't, I guess I should start asking. Um, but I, I'm hopeful. And as far as like getting new readers in, it's, it's, you just have to want to do it. You just have to want to carry the stuff. And, you know, you got to suffer a little bit uh, trying to figure out what you want. Obviously, there's manga. Uh, kids love that stuff. <laughs> a whole different uh, comic book uh, person loves that stuff. Um, sometimes it crosses, and that's really cool, too. And, you know, like, that's how I build my store. I'm trying to, like, I'm always, you know, there's, there's superhero. Did you know that this person that does this book that you like also does this and maybe it's horror, you know, like a colon bun or something like that. Try and grow them into the industry, uh, you know, by levels. And it might start, start with some of those board books, you know, those golden board books that I am a Padawan came out for me and it's like, all right, well, uh, someone's got a teeth on something. <laughs> so, you know, you, you gotta get that stuff and you gotta, you gotta really push it and make it, make it so. I think that you do. And I think you have to keep your passion for the business. And I do think there's a lot of comic shop owners who have been at this for a long time who maybe aren't excited about it anymore, but they, they it's their business. It's what they know, so they keep doing it. Um, I'm reminded of, um, if you're in the Pacific Northwest, you probably heard of a place called Xanadu. Mm -hmm. It was a comic shop, had a few, um, and I, they had a, like a long run. I want to say 40 plus years of, of being in business. And uh, Perry Plush was the owner, and he was known through the comic community. People who've been in comics for a long time knew the guy. And you saw in the last, I'd say, 10 years, maybe that's too much, but, but for a while, his heart was clearly gone. He, he did not care. Well, not didn't care. He just, it was making him miserable. You saw this guy just, he would show up in events, he'd be angry. And it's what I see from a lot of people, from, from Hibbs and, and others right now. They don't seem happy. Uh, they're, they're doing their thing, and they're maybe they're, they're happy to hold court with other people in the business, but they don't, they're not excited to be in it anymore. And it translates to the customer. Demand. So finally Xandu closed and um, I ran into uh, to Perry uh, like three months later after it closed. And he was the happiest I'd seen him in a decade. He was just, it was like he had a second life and he was starting, he's like, I'm enjoying comics again. I'm actually starting to read them and I, I can actually care about this business. And, and so maybe um, I don't know if it's what everybody can agree on. It's just, you know, if you, if you lose your heart for it, you know, you need to step down. Don't keep inflicting yourself on everybody else. It doesn't do you or anyone any good. And, and maybe you can get, find your way back to being a fan. Because if you can be a fan, that's that's what counts. All comic store owners really need to want to like the pro. You know, they have to they have to like comics. <laughs> yeah. It's just if you don't like comics, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. All right. So this is the last thing I have that I think we can all agree on. We'll we'll do this one pretty short because it's it's not a you know a huge. Uh, a revelation or anything, but I do think that Marvel and DC and, and some of these other studios, when they release the, the movies associated with the comics, there should be a trailer or some type of advertisement to let people know where this stuff came from. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be small. <laughs> uh, the new 52, they did that, um, I remember. Uh, I think they did yeah. it for their Age of Heroes also. And you'll they see did. it on TV every once in a while, but it's what, sci fi? And who cares about TV commercials anymore anyway? You got to figure out a way to do it. I think, uh, you know, they got their YouTube channels, Marvel, DC, some of these other people that are creators do it. So that's a way to at least communicate with fans. I hope, you know, it's just how they communicate with their fans is the question. Yeah, uh, I, it probably not put so much of the, the onus on the creators to do the advertising also, right? I will agree on yeah. that one. I think we all can. I'm, yeah, we've talked about that also. But yeah, Marvel doesn't... I don't know. I guess they feel that their cartoons or their movies are the advertisement. And really, the comic book should be the advertisement for those things, I feel. Because it's cheaper, right? <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, they could just give comics away, really. If, if they just budget it for their movies, they could just give them away and it's cheaper advertisement, probably. Well, they're too busy, you know, uh, promoting Cinco de Mayo, Deadpool, Chimichangas on their fucking YouTube channel. 
<laughs> to talk about what's actually in the com comic book. It's insanity. Well, at least that ties in. I'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> when it's like a Deadpool pancake, then I'm not interested at all. <laughs> so it's tough that um, I think everybody could agree, uh, including even the publishers, although they might do it grudgingly. That the marketing isn't working uh, at a high level. Just the marketing that they're doing right now is not catching those new fans, not getting them in, and, and something new needs to be done. And I, I, I definitely think um, it's a case where. I think everybody has in their head that these big publishers, particularly Marvel and DC, that you go in, there's like a marketing office and there's 30 people in there and they're highly qualified. They've come from HBO and they've come from other places in the entertainment industry. They know how to get social media trends going and they, they know SEO and they know all these things. And then you find out that, no, it's, it's largely a bunch of interns. It's a bunch of people who are, you know, six months out of college, if that, and, and they're hoping their real hope is to get into like a Disney marketing and get out of Marvel marketing. And I think that it's eye opening to see that that this whole arm of the business is one that's underfunded. And that's why they rely on creators. And that's why we see it go the way it goes. And, and it's definitely something that a uh, lot of room for improvement. And I, I think most people would agree with that. And even inside their comic books, the advertising is kind of, you know, not very big at all. <laughs> it's not very good. It doesn't, I don't know. Maybe it's just because again, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm, I'm a lot more reflective of the past and uh, you know, that mile high ad in the middle is way more captivating than any commercial in the comic book I've seen today, except for maybe that Snickers ad that DC did. And that was just because it upset me so much. Mm -hmm, Cause the art style was too similar to the yeah. real book. Well, it was R Reyes, I think. And I'm like, oh, that's how you know this is the guy in the company. <laughs> He's yep. doing a Snickers ad. So, well, all right, fellas, I think we've talked about some of the things we can find common ground on. Obviously, I, I think we, we're probably going to find out we can't even find common ground on that in the comments. I feel like we're, we're going to be dumped on a, on a few of those. Uh, but, Perch, do you have anything to say before we, we wrap this up? No, if, if finding common ground is important. So I hope we keep we keep fighting for it and, and kind of like uh, – I'm sure the guy was at do we do if, if you're not loving your job then you know something needs to change <laughs> absolutely all right you did you have anything else that maybe we you wanted to expound upon or, or say before uh, we wrap i up? like that common ground because you know uh even in the world or even in the comic store there's a lot of different things but the thing is is that we like comic books you know in the world we we like the world <laughs> let's uh, -huh. uh Let's get along. <laughs> Let's figure it out. <laughs> Please. All right, thanks, fellas.